Hey, this is Chuck the Goat from Goat USA. I wanted to break into your podcast and tell you about the new Goat USA store coming to Garden State Plaza on November 1st. If you love high quality lifestyle apparel, then get in on the hottest athletic lifestyle brand. Come buy an iconic t shirt and heavenly soft hooded sweatshirt and start feeling like the greatest of all time. So come on out to Garden State Plaza in November and get your Goat USA swag. Goat USA, apparel for kids and adults. Chuck out. <laughs> Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to The Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC on a Tuesday on which not much is happening because it's an international break, but... We do have some news, and that is that Chris Kavanagh has been appointed the referee for Liverpool's game against Manchester City on Saturday. That will be Chris Kavanagh from Greater Manchester. Uh, Stuart Atwell, another one of our friends, will be the VAR, and assisting him is Tim Wood. Simon Bennett and Dan Robithan will be the referee's assistants, and Thomas Brammel will act as the fourth official. Um, We've done fairly well with Kavanaugh, to be fair to him. 15 games he has overseen. We've won 13 and lost just two. We've won our last six with him as the referee, and he's refereed two Merseyside derbies. He's never taken charge of a game where Liverpool takes on one of Manchester's two big clubs. So that's a little bit of a concern. He's not a bad referee, to be fair. But it is a bit funky that so many of the referees are from that one area. Uh, There's a story on This Is Anfield about an Arsenal youngster who scored 10 goals in a game against Liverpool, (laughs) which is a little bit nuts. Um, the story aims to provide some context as to why he scored 10 goals. And look, at the end of the day, when two elite academy teams face off, regardless of the circumstance, for one youngster to score 10 goals in one game is pretty incredible. So I think you just have to take your hat off to that youngster and say, hopefully he develops well and and you know, makes the grade at Arsenal and we see what, what he becomes. Um, just going back to the, the City game, there's been a lot of cloak and dagger stuff around City's injuries. And it appears now like most of the players that were potentially missing are going to be fine. I don't think that's really a surprise to anybody. But it does just it does just leak into the dishonesty of Manchester City. And Guardiola is front and center in so much of this. And they're about to get the hammer dropped on them at some point. Because everybody knows they've cheated. Everybody knows they've cheated. But he's almost been kept separate to a lot of it. A lot of people don't want to throw him in with it. But there's no question that he knows exactly what's going on and that he's fully complicit for any reason other than money. And you have to imagine he's getting paid significant amounts under the table in the same way we know that Roberto Martinez or Roberto Mancini was in the past. There's just no way around that. He's got to be getting paid significant amounts under the table or for some 
weird directorship he's been given with some Abu Dhabi based company, the way certain players were in the past. City spend millions a year to cheat, and there's no way Pep doesn't know what's going on. But I just wanted to say that because it's been bugging me. Because every time I see the discourse around City, it's like you get people to say, oh, what will this mean for Pep's legacy? It means he's a cheat. Like he was a cheat when he played and he failed those drugs tests. He's been a cheat as a manager now as well. Um, Joanna Durkin has put together uh, 10 of Gerard Houllier's best Liverpool quotes. Liverpool players must play like a lion, give his all. There must be determination, commitment and resolve to be a Liverpool player. That's fair. There are those who say, maybe I should forget about football. Maybe I should forget about breathing. For any negative you want to say about Jed, and there's a few things you can point to, there's no questioning his commitment to the cause. Uh, Football is my oxygen. We don't destroy our heroes today when we worship them yesterday. That's quite a good one. We don't have any splits here. The players, countries, Liverpool Football Club, and their language is football. It's a bit cliche, but it's good. Our job is to make fans happy. When we win, 45,000 people go home happy. When we lose, it not only affects them, it affects their cats. That's pretty good. You can't build a cathedral in a day. A look at the club's history tells you these things take time. I noticed a former captain of ours said recently that this squad is so good that we don't need a manager. I took this as a compliment. He must have changed his mind since leaving, as he said at the time that Phil Thompson and I would drag the club down. On that point, I suppose he was right. We dragged the club down to Cardiff three times in the last 10 months. That was aimed at Paul Ince, who'd made some fairly shitty comments about Julier after Julier shoved him out the door. To me, the team is more important than any individual member of the squad, and the players have to realise that and accept that my priority is to pick a side with the best possible chance of winning each match. That's good. That is good. It's very basic, but it's good. And then this one is the one that sold them to a lot of people. I used to stand on the cop when I was here in 1969. The atmosphere and passion on the pitch, as well as on the terraces, was intoxicating. And Liverpool became a part of me from that moment on. Obviously, Jed had lived uh, in Liverpool while studying um, back in the 60s and, and fallen in love with the club. There's a few other quotes that obviously aren't included because this is a very positive article, and it should be. Jed put us back on the map in terms of Europe, won the treble, had good success at the club, but there are a few belting <laughs> belting Jed, uh, Jedisms that you could pull out. You didn't want to be as kind. Um, there's a piece here about Tyler Morton saying he's not bitter that he's currently out on loan while Harvey and Gerald Quantz are currently playing for Liverpool's first team, Uh, which is good to see. He's got a very positive outlook. Here's a good thing, right? Now, this is... I I wouldn't have guessed this number in a million years. Jurgen Klopp has sold 82 players since taking over. Now, some of them left on freeze, but 82 players have left the club since Jürgen came in. Some of them were players that came in under him and then left again. Some were there, or most were there when he was there to begin with. So Joanna Durkin's put together uh, this entire list. Martin Skirtle is playing back in Slovakia. Jordan Ibe, currently playing with Ebb's Fleet United. Uh, Joe Allen, playing for Swansea now. Jose Enrique is retired and annoying everybody on social media. Uh, Colo Toure was Brendan Rodgers' assistant for a while at Celtic and at Leicester, and and then he went to Wigan as manager himself and got sacked after nine games. Uh, Jordan Rossiter, currently out long-term with a knee injury, but he's at Bristol Rovers. Joe Teixeira, do you remember him? He's 30 now. He is 30 now. That is mad. He's playing in China. Uh, Jerome Sinclair. He left for Watford. 
He since played for Birmingham, Sunderland, Oxford, VVV Venlo, which I always just think sounds like someone with a speech impediment, and I know that sounds bad, but that's just the first thought that comes to mind. And CSKA Sophia, uh, he's currently without a club at 27. Fair to say uh, his career didn't work out as planned. Uh, Samid Yessel, he's now playing in the fifth tier of German football. Uh, Sergi Canos is playing with Valencia, having obviously had a a long run with Brentford. Uh, Brad Smith playing for Houston Dynamo in the MLS. Christian Benteke playing for DC United in MLS. Uh, Luis Alberto has been a star for Lazio since leaving. Mario Balotelli is playing for Adana Demospor in Turkey. He's bounced around a fair bit. Uh, Lucas retired. Kevin Stewart, currently without a club, played for Hull, went in the swap deal for Andy Robertson, uh, played for Hull for three years. They released him on a free with a year left on his deal. He went to Blackpool and can't get a game anywhere now. Uh, Sacco was just fired by Montpellier for giving his manager a slap. Uh, Andre Wisdom is playing for Warrington Town. Tiago Alori, currently without a club. Jack Dunn, playing for Marine, so he stayed local, also played for Tranmere. Alex Manninger, he is retired, and Ryan Fulton is playing for Hamilton Academico. Uh, Phil Coutinho, obviously, uh, currently warming the bench at Aston Villa. No, he's not. He's currently playing in Qatar. He went on loan. Uh, Emre Chan is playing very, very well for Borussia Dortmund. He's their current captain. Uh, Danny Ward is the third choice goalkeeper at Leicester. That was a, an absolute robbery. We we stole their money and sent them a dud. Um, Ragnar Klavan is president player. Not player coach, not player manager, president player for a club in Estonia. So the best of luck to him. Hope it's all going well. Uh, John Flanagan retired because he's a dreadful gang of lads. Cameron Brannigan is actually playing really well for Oxford and has for a long time. I, it's surprising that he stayed there that long. He's obviously very happy. Um, but he's still only 27, so he might still move on. Lloyd Jones, um, currently at Charlton. Dominic Solanke, obviously doing well for Bournemouth. Daniel Sturridge, without a club, hasn't said he's retiring, but it would appear he's retired. Alberto Moreno, he's still, still at Villarreal. He's done well there. Lazar Markovic is playing in Turkey for Gazentiyip. Danny Ings playing for West Ham. Simon Mignolet playing for Club Bruges. Ryan Kent, he went to Fenerbahce in the summer on a free. Bobby Duncan. What a shame. He has no club and no real prospect in the game anymore. Uh, Rafael Camacho. He's still owned, I think, by Sporting, but doesn't get any games. Uh, Adam Bogdan. Not sure where. He's no longer with the club, so he's he's currently out of the game. Uh, Connor Randall playing for Ross County in Scotland. Dejan de Pebble Lovren currently being dreadful for Leon, another dreadful gang of lads. Uh, Adam Lalana dragging down the level at Brighton. Rian Brewster continuing to flop at Sheffield United. Nathaniel Klein is the backup right back at Crystal Palace behind Joel Ward, which is not something you would have wanted to see for Nathaniel Klein, who seems like a really nice lad. Uh, Key Yana Hoiver is on loan with Stoke, and he's done fairly well there, from what I know. Uh, Alan, the young Brazilian that we loaned out 400 million times, has been really good since going back to Brazil. He's now at Flamengo. Uh, Pedro Chiravella is the captain of Nantes and has done really, really well there. 
Uh, Ovi Ajaria is with Reading. He hasn't played in a year due to injury problems. Herbie Kane is starting regularly for Barnsley. Andy Lonergan is at Everton, being their third-choice goalkeeper. Uh, Ginny Wijnaldum, obviously, is with Al Etifak on loan from PSG. Teu Awanee is playing really well for Forrest. Harry Wilson doing well for Fulham. Jordan Shakiri playing for Chicago Fire in MLS. Marco Grujic is at Porto, not getting his game anymore. Ozan Kabak is at Hoffenheim playing regularly. Uh, Yazar Larushi, he's at Sheffield United on loan. Camille Grabara, he's been brilliant since joining Copenhagen and has earned a big move to Wolfsburg to go next summer. Uh, Liam Miller playing for Preston this season on loan. Sadio didn't work out at Bayern. He's now at Al Nazir. Taki has finally found form with Monaco after a rough first season. Divock flopped at AC Milan and is now on loan at Nottingham Forest. Uh, Nico Williams. Very hit and miss last season for Forrest and not getting his game this season for Forrest. Uh, Loris Karios is the second or third choice goalkeeper, probably third choice goalkeeper really, realistically, at Newcastle. Uh, ben Woodburn is at Preston and is generally kind of a squad player there. Ben Davies is up at Rangers, infuriating fans with his refusal to win aerial duels. Uh, Shea Ojo, is, I believe, playing in Belgium. Let me just check. This actually doesn't say where he is. Shay Ojo. Yes, he is playing in Belgium. Um, He's on loan from Cardiff at a club whose name I'm not even going to try and pronounce. Another one who had all the talent and never made the most of it. Uh, Elijah Dixon Bonner. He is at... QPR. Louis Longstaff is playing for Inverness Caledonian Thistle. Tony Gallagher is playing for St. Johnston in Scotland. And Morgan Boys is also at Inverness Caledonian Thistle. Um, fair. James Milner looking uber washed down at Brighton. Bobby not doing great in Saudi, it must be said. He started well. He's not been good for the last little while. Uh, Henderson playing in front of nobody and not playing very well for Al Etifak. Fabinho looking very washed for um, Al Etihad. Ox is actually playing quite well for Besiktas, though they are not very good. Nabi just keeps getting hurt for Werder Bremen. Uh, Leighton Clarkson made the permanent move to Aberdeen. Obviously, he's done really well up there. Uh, Leighton Stewart. That kid ha- has loads of talent, but whether or not he can stay fit enough to get regular games, I don't know. It's a shame. The lad has real natural ability in front of goal, just doesn't ever seem to stay fit long enough to uh to make the most of it. Uh let's see, how's he doing this season? He's another one that's oppressed and they they do heavily scout the academies of the top clubs. Uh he's only played once this season, so I'm guessing I think he came on as an 88 minute sub. I'm guessing injuries just continue to plague him there. Jack Byrne is at Grenick Morton in the Scottish Championship coming off the bench. Liam Hughes is without a club. And Max Voltman, he went to Oxford, where he is teammates with Cameron Brannigan, and hopefully will have a similar type of run. It is nuts when you go through that list and think of how many players just were moved on under Klopp. Then you start to realise Jürgen's been at the club a long, long time now, where... We're eight years into this and showing no signs of, of slowing up. So, you know, um, likely a lot more to leave uh, as time passes us by. Um, you can check out Liverpool.com for yourself today because I just, I can't be arsed with the hopes and dreams and 
stuff about players that have and managers that have nothing to do with anything to do with Liverpool. Um Anfieldindex.com, there is a piece about Rafinha potentially as a Liverpool target. Bobby's father passed away. Um, so obviously there's a piece about that. Very, very difficult time for for Bobby and thoughts with the whole Firmino family. Uh, David Lynch spoke recently about contract talks that are about to come up for Liverpool and the important ones there. There's a piece about Liverpool maybe making a, another tactical change piece of it, me waffling about Dominic. And then podcast-wise, we continue to be very, very fucking busy. Uh, so there is a season so far pod with Dave Davis and David Lynch looking back on the games thus far. There's the pro pluses with um, that Dave Davis has, have, has done, one with Trev, uh, one with James McKean, and one with Mark, uh, sorry, and Mark Evans. There is the new Under Pressure, uh, Dan Kennett, Phil Barter, and the brilliant Hamza Khalik Lunat, who's outstanding. Um, delighted to have him back in the fold at Anfield Index. He was with us for a brief while, uh, moved on to other things, and now just has the time to bring AI back in. So he's a great addition. He genuinely is top lad as well. So Make sure if you if you find can't think what his Twitter handle is, but if you find him on Twitter, make sure you give him a follow. Um, he is very very good at the the tactical side of things. Oh, here he is. Here he is. H Kalik K H. So H K H A L I Q U E L O O N A F. Kalik Luna, I think, is the correct pronunciation of his surname. There is a, a hyphen in there. There's a double barrel surname. Uh, he works for the Times. So, you know, moved on to bigger and better things. But uh, great to have him in the mix. Good for the Times journalist. We've got an independent journalist. They, David Lynch worked for national newspapers. Outstanding stuff. Bringing you the best and brightest here at Anfield Index. Um, so, yeah, that new under pressure should be a belter. There is a new scouted out. And there's another one that we've just recorded today. So you have loads of stuff. Loads and loads of stuff. And we'll have... Loads more to come this week. A scouts of, another scouts of Tommy's. There'll be a buzz. There'll be another scouted for uh, City. There'll be a rival recon. There's a minefield coming. There's a Moby on the spot coming. The transfer committee pod is this week. We are cranking things up. Cranking things up for you, the listener. So there you go. Um, you just have to put up with a lot of me. I will be back tomorrow, folks. I will speak to you then. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network.